how do you think about prompting? And do you have approaches or mindsets that you use when you're actually prompting? Or And maybe you could even talk about particular situations or examples. Yeah. So generally speaking, um, I think there's there's a lot to teach there and there's a lot to explore. But at the very base level, even when I use it on, my, on a day-to-day -day basis, I find myself just talking to it like a human. Um, mm -hmm. And there's this very, very basic question and, and thing that I needed to clarify with myself early on. And that is because you see all these kind of like fancy prompts and approaches and personas and context and priming it with information and, and uh, you know, feeding it five examples or databases in advance, whatever. But at the end of the day, only thing that matters is that you get a result that you're happy with, right? Mm -hmm. So that, that is one of the first things that one needs to realize, like what makes a good prompt, right? That is, that's kind of a big question. And the answer is very simple. It's when you get a result that you're satisfied, satisfied with, your prompt is good enough. So often a single sentence might just do it, right? But when that doesn't yield the results that um, it could be, there's that component of, yeah, you also need to be aware of what it could do, right? That, that comes with education. But at the very base level, when I try to get something very simple done, just ask a very simple question like I would an assistant. Um, and then beyond that, there's, you know, I have certain frameworks and ways of kind of fleshing it out and adding the context it needs and specific techniques to get more advanced results can help in certain situations. But in my day-to-day, -day, whenever I encounter a problem, like for example, I was doing my accounting and I ran into a little problem with um, a calendar with like different conversion rates in it being transferred to Excel file. And I didn't just want to type it. I just told it like, can you turn this into Excel file? And it just did it, right? Like there's no need for the super advanced techniques if the simple one does it. Mm -hmm. um, so that, that is the first thing I would say. And honestly, that for most people that unlocks like 60 to 70% of the use cases already just mm -hmm. talking to it. Um, and at the end of the day, I'll just add this one, one more point, very important point, um, is that prompting is often like packaged in this kind of like mysterious way. And people say like prompt engineering, and then it, it gets certain people who are not that deep into it confused. And they're like, sounds like a technical skill. At the end of the day, it's just communication. It's just good communication. The same things, same rules that apply to good communication apply to good prompting. Um, be concise, avoid ambigu ambiguity at all costs, right? Um, these principles will go a long way. If your sentences are convoluted and it's not, it, not even a human would clearly understand what you're trying to communicate there, large language model is going to have a problem with that too because all it did was get trained on things that humans said and human communication. So if, you get, if you're good at communication, chances are you're quite good at this. And that's why a lot of, that's why a lot of people who have natural communication skills really excel at prompting too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a really nice definition, right? A good prompt is one that gives you a good result. It really gets you back to the basics. Yeah, well said. And agreed about the communication. Uh, when I've uh, taught marketing and copywriting, I always basically start out by saying, we're studying thinking, right? We're studying thinking and we're studying communication, but we're going to do it by practicing marketing and copywriting. And then now with AI, when I teach this stuff in prompting, I say the same thing because it really is about clarifying your thinking. If you can get your thinking clear, then the solution to the prompt is very, it's easy. It's right in front of you. You understand. Exactly. Mm -hmm. A funny example there um, is philosophers are extremely good prompt engineers from what I've seen. People who dabble in philosophy, like, and it's so confusing to most people, like, why would they be good? Because just what you said, their thinking is clear. They mm -hmm. understand whatever that worldview might be, but they understand their own worldview and how it's built and the axioms that it's built upon. And then they're yes. able to call upon those, right? In their communication, which makes it so much simpler if you're, if you're able to really boil it down and just communicate the essence of the thing or, or communicate at different layers. Um, that's what made, that's what makes it really good. And I've seen some incredibly gifted prompt engineers that had a philosophical background. Um, mm. So, you know, that's a good point. I hadn't thought of that, but I agree with you. I I interviewed someone who had a, a philosophy background. He was great at his promptings, really clear. And I'll just add to this too. If you've always thought about learning philosophy, but you were like, oh, that's just too weird and too abstract. 
try using ChatGPT to teach you philosophy because it can start with you right where you're at. It can explain philosophy, you know, in a word, in a sentence, in a paragraph. It can explain it for your situation. You can really pick it up and learn such an incredible teaching tool.